A very warm welcome and a good evening. Thank you so much yet again for joining us in UCTV News. I am Nora Sender to bring you the bulletin this evening. It is a Tuesday and it is the 20th of August 2024. We thank you so much for staying with us. Before we get into the bulletin, let's take a look at what's happening in the headlines this evening. Go on, go on negotiating. KCCS seeks extension to dump garbage at Katabi landfill. We have, a, we have a solution within this interim period. Kasasa residents call for lasting solution to climate disasters. We didn't receive any relief or any support that is tackling health issues. Well, thank you so much for staying with us on UCTV News. Now the bulletin in detail. The UPDF, in coordination with South Sudan People's Defense Force and the Central African Republic Security Forces, have successfully launched an operation targeting three camps belonging to Joseph Kony in the Central African Republic. Now, all camps were destroyed and equipment was seized. According to the information provided by Kanodewa Akiki, the Deputy Defense Public Information Officer. Today morning on the 20th of August 2024, UPDF commandos in coordination with the South Sudan People's Defense Forces and Central African Republic Security Forces launched an operation against three camps of the remnants of Joseph Kony in Central African Republic. Uh, this was uh, east of Sam Oonja. And uh, the three camps were destroyed and uh, equipments captured. And these remnants of LRA still taking refuge in the Central African Republic, they are simply advised to surrender to the authorities or else anywhere on this continent of Africa, they are not safe. It is wise for them to hand themselves into the authorities for proper processing and rehabilitation like we have done with other remnants. There is no shortcut. Now, the residents and the local leaders from Kasese District are calling for a lasting solution for the devastating effects of climate change. Repeated disasters, including the river flooding, the landslides and the mudslides that have claimed lives and destroyed property, leaving the community in a constant state of fear and uncertainty. Residents and local leadership of Chahuba Subcounty in Kasese District are seeking for a permanent solution for the effects of climate change that have repeatedly led to loss of lives and property. The residents, together with the local leaders, urge that for some years they have been experiencing different forms of disasters, including flooding of the rivers, the landslides, and the mudslides. Ezra Chising Halira, the local council chairperson in LOC1 of Kayasi Village, says in the meeting they have experienced disasters. He appealed to the government and government organizations to come up with solutions that would avoid flooding of rivers and landslides to prevent further havoc. We request government and NGOs to come and assist the community for the disaster that affected us on the 5th of May 2023, where we lost our dear ones, five of them. We want them to, to support us in a tree planting like the bamboo, and any other trees, more special, we would, would like the bamboo. Joyless Serembethe highlighted that the area was largely disaster prone following ever increasing population which influences the people to compete for land and end up applying poor farming methods. He also mentioned that there were other communities including Chiduku and Chihungu that needed attention of the development partners because of their susceptibility to disasters. Uh, we expressed a lot of challenges. Like one of the challenges we expressed in the camps, we didn't receive any relief or any support that is tackling uh, um, health issues, like for the, 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 the adolescents and so on. People had lost their clothes, uh, everything, so they had nothing to lose while in the camps. And uh, these people, True, they have gone back home, but others don't know where they are going to start from. Others are in homes of the relatives. And I may think some time back, uh, in the meantime, you may find um, those issues creating domestic violence in those homes. 
because when this one is cooking this side and another one is cooking the other side, this one may be cooking uh, fish and another one is cooking food. Neither could be one family or one, one side that is supporting in food and another one does not have where to go. Albert Kajungu, the NRM chairperson of Chahuba sub-county, noted that government should consider giving bamboo trees that will help to mitigate the flooding issues in the area. Appeal to other partners who may support uh, the people of Jarumba uh, following the, the disaster, that they should follow this group. And uh, I, I may not forget other partners like the vision group and uh, action against the hunger, the world, the world food program and others who have come to support the people of Jarumba. The local residents of Chahuba concurred with Kajungu asking partners and government to provide them with bamboo trees. As the Kasese continues to grapple with the relentless impact of climate change, their plea for permanent solution underscores the urgency of addressing this growing crisis. Without decisive action, the cycle of loss and devastation is likely to persist, threatening the very livelihood and safety of the community. The Kampala Capital City Authority is seeking an extension from Entebbe Municipal Council authorities as the deadline for dumping waste at Inkumba Landfill in Katabi Town Council elapsed yesterday night. This follows a recent halt in the dumping at Chitezi due to the landfill collapse, which has left city authorities overwhelmed by the rapidly accumulating waste in Kampala and its division. Daniel Muhumuza, the head of Publics and Corporate Affairs, at KCC, catching up with our reporter, appeal to the public to change their mindset on waste management and disposal. We had a few issues with the leadership there. These issues are being resolved. We had a timeline up to midnight last night, but there are some garbage trucks that were in a line. Remember, those that were on the way are going to. Uh, offload that uh, that garbage and uh, we we go on we go on negotiating with the leadership of Entebbe who own the the site to make sure we we have a, we have a solution within this interim period and uh, today the permanent secretary of the ministry of local government that is in charge or that supervises these local governments around invited them as well as uh, as well as the kcca the authority into a meeting where these issues are going to, are going to come up and we shall have an amicable solution for all of us like i said in chitezi we would offload seven trucks at any given time so the speed was faster. Now we're in a situation where we, we have 170 trucks that we were offloading at Chitezi, now heading to a place where they offload once. Yeah? Every, every offload, there's only one truck that can be accepted to offload away from the seven. That causes a lag. Uh, we appeal to people to start behavior change. If you are from cultures that eat food that is covered in fibers, please, for now, let's put the coverings aside and deal with the crisis. If you have peeled, handle those peelings properly. And uh, people who have uh, uh, animals, livestock, can take them to feed them to goats or, uh, or their cows or sheep. <laughs> Katinaria 
Let's now take a quick break. UCTV News returns. UCTV. Good news for all. And welcome back from that break. Now, the Yes Sports Arena in Zambia is more than just a sports ground. It's a sanctuary of hope for over 350 refugee children from seven countries who gather daily. Father Joseph Mary Sebunya tells us how this unique space blends sports with spirituality, offering a safe haven where young lives are nurtured, diversity is celebrated, and the challenges of life are met with unity and resilience. At the Year Sports Arena, where sports meet spirituality, a unique blend of hope and unity is being fostered. This arena has become a beacon for young people, especially the refugees who find themselves neither in school nor employed. It draws children from around the world, each bringing different cultures, faith, making it a place where unity thrives amid its diversity. These children are from all over the world, different cultures, faiths, some are non-Christians, but we have a place of encounter where we, we have basic principles of Christianity. The basic law is love one another. That's the God's commandment, which is a sight. So if these children from different nations, which some of which are fighting from different tribes in warring countries, can come together, we have a future, a hope for the future of unity. Juros Morola from Soccer Without Borders harnesses the power of sports as a tool for positive change. Through this initiative, the Year Sports Arena offers a safe space for over 350 refugee children daily from seven different countries, giving them a sense of belonging. Uh, Soccer Without Borders uses football as a vehicle for positive change, providing toolkits to underserved children and youth uh, here in uh, Sambia and Kampala communities. Uh, to overcome obstacles to growth, inclusion and personal success. We've been in uh, Zambia since 2008 and uh, this space here has been our home ever since uh, where we bring refugee children together, those who are out of school, provide them with uh, language training programs, uh, football training programs and also community building and girls empowerment. Uh, we work with over 350 children every day coming from over seven countries. This is DR Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and also South uh, Sudan or Sudan, the north one. And uh, what we do here is to create a space, to create a home uh, for these newcomer refugees and also feel uh, a sense of belonging here in the Zambia community but also within the Uganda community uh, at large. The Year Sports Arena stands as more than just a place to hone athletic skills. It is a sanctuary where young people can find refuge from the challenges of their daily lives. Here, the emphasis is not solely on developing talent, but on providing a stable and safe environment that offers relief from stress. It is a space where hope is restored, helping those young individuals to overcome the many obstacles they face. Overall, uh, this sport is the, not just what you'd think on skill building or providing talents or developing talents, but uh, this sport is creating a home and also it's creating a, a consistent space, safe, and also where these young kids can come to day to day, connect with peers, uh, reduce the stress and also uh, challenges they might be encountering as newcomers or as, as refugees in this community, but also find strength in meeting fellows with uh, ex lived experiences or similar experiences and create hope within uh, that group or within that uh, social setup. Uh, as you can see here, we've got over 150 children that are playing right now. But if you go on each team, you'll find that each team has got at least two to five refugees coming from a certain community, a certain country. And now football or this sport has brought them into one thing. Uh, and also that's to play, connect and also have fun. Over the years, the Year Sports Arena has seen more than 10,000 children pass through its grounds. The Girls League, in particular, has provided adults and girls with the opportunity to connect and engage, especially during the holidays, offering them the same chances for growth and development as their male counterparts. We've served over 10,000 young children, refugees coming from numerous corners of East Africa, 
but also uh, working with locals as well. We have the Kampala Girls League, which is uh, an initiative by Soccer Without Borders that we created to bring girls also to be able to benefit from sports, same as their male friends or male counterparts are benefiting, and also be able to level this so that girls also can uh, benefit. So uh, through Kampala Girls League, we've served over, uh, I would say, a thousand uh, girls as well across Kampala, Wakiso and also Entebbe and other um, districts around Mukono and uh, that is to make sure that girls can have also that space, they can come, connect, exchange experiences, have fun and also build on their skills as well. And uh, this happens every school holiday, a time that we all know young children, especially adolescent girls, are exposed to risks, uh, staying home and also having something that uh, may not engage them to that level. So we reduce those risks for them, come in this space, see fellow girls play, connect with each other, celebrate progresses and also successes, and uh, see them develop into really wonderful friends and also networks. However, Father Joseph Mary Sebunya acknowledges that sustaining such a venture is challenging due to the high costs involved in resource mobilization. He calls on the community to support this initiative, emphasizing the need for diversity and inclusion of youth from all social backgrounds. Resource mobilization for the projects running and also the programs. So projects sometimes we want to aim at self-sustainability and one of them is this field. And we want to welcome those who can hire actually when the sports time is gone for these other vulnerable children, we also hire it out. People want to do sports, do you know, running around. It's for, out for hire for special functions uh, that can be compatible with our objectives again. As I said, you can't have a marijuana party here or a chimansulo party here. No, we are saying it's a sports meeting spirituality. We have encounters. So we want to ask, uh, one big challenge, as I said, is the diversity of youth from different social backgrounds. You have to get them into an ethic principles. So we have to hammer those first. We have to teach them discipline. We have to teach them how to respect one another and respecting this place. Some people don't, are not used to following the rules. They want to do their thing. They come here and do everything and everything. We kick you out. Some people have bad habits, drug addicts. Uh, some are, are assault other people. We have had someone assaulting another here because they just hit him in the foot. He almost strangled him. We thought they were just rest, playing. We had to save somebody because his anger just went over. He had anger management problems. So when we realize that, then our next sessions, when they sit together, we try to teach that, to handle that, and we pray that God makes a difference. The Yes Sports Arena in Zambia is providing more than just a place to play. It is creating a lifeline of hope and unity for refugee youth, offering a safe haven where sports meets spirituality to help young people overcome life's challenges. Nora Osende for UCTV News. It's time for today in history. Thank you for staying with us on UCTV News. You're taking a quick break. When we return, it's the Rome Report. UCTV. Good news for all. Dear children, friends of Jesus, you're welcome to your program. I'm Dorothy Atire Songo. Be with us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Ghost.
gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. For church leaders, we pray for their well being. May the Almighty God guide and lead them through their missions. We pray to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are watching UCTV. Good news for all. For this and more, tune in to Kasese Get Radio 100.5 in Western Region, located at the hill of the Diocese of Kasese. KGR brings you all Catholic programs and an advertising platform in all our radio shows like Good Morning Rinzori, Chama Tovoka, Ukute, The Business Show, Propeller, The Request Show, and Sports, Evaluation, Bahinga Bakuluka, Late Night Show, and many others. Our other services include Isuzu Tipa, a no car, public address system, live band, Omoke Kera, an audio recording studio, and outside live broadcast. For more information, call 0773 597 166 or visit our website www.kasesegetradio.com. Kasesiget Radio, Omusondoria, the voice of truth. UCTV, good news for all. Well, that marks the end of our bulletin this evening. It has been nice having you. Thank you so much for staying with us. I am Nora Sende. We wish you a very lovely evening and a good night.